Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. We have some very interesting breaking news uh, about uh, Russia and their drill that they're planning in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there are some sources that are reporting that uh, the Russian naval fleet... Uh, what we have here is the that uh, Putin is actually his forces are headed to to the Atlantic. It's a drill that was already uh, planned, uh, according to uh, TASS, Russian news agency, on June 23rd. It says the naval group of Russian Black Sea Fleet, led by the guided missile cruiser Mushkaba, will begin a mission in the Atlantic soon. Uh, the fleet spokes cap spokesman, Captain First Class uh, uh, Via Kaslev. Um, said on Tuesday, according to the official, uh, the force incorporating the uh, Moskva, the escort ship, the uh, and several other ships, including a salvage ship for submarines. Uh, it is believed also that there is going to be a large contingency of subs that are that will be going with this particular fleet and several different uh, cruise missile ships by Russia. Uh, now, I might mind you, as I mention this to you, and we're going to take a look at some other articles about this same story here is that um, Russia, very much like the United States, they call these things drills, but according to the, uh, the documentary that was put out by Russia on the way, uh, or the way home uh, regarding Crimea, uh, returning back to the, uh, to the Russian uh, motherland as part of their own state, uh, in that referendum that took place back in 2014. Uh, they said then that the United States that was doing their drills in the Black Sea had actually come to try to take Crimea back away from uh, the Russians who had came there to protect the Crimeans from the aggression of the uh, Western neo-Nazis uh, uh, of Ukraine that were trying to kill and massacre uh, all of the Russian-speaking people of Ukraine, both East Ukraine as well as Crimea. Um, but uh, Vladimir Putin then said that he put his uh, guided S-400 supersonic missiles in plain view of the satellites, hoping to avert a, a, a nuclear war, he said at that time. Uh, but he said that this was not a drill. This was the U.S. and, their, and the NATO allies were coming there to fight for Crimea. But of course, the U.S. and NATO's allies did not want to get into an all-out war with Russia either. They just basically hoped that they could get in there and take the, the, the island nation back before Russia could do anything about it. And of course, Russia's naval fleet has been based there all along in the first place. So it is a strategic area and, and, and a, certainly a place of conflict. But the the point here that I want to bring out to you is that what the United States was calling a drill in the Black Sea back in 2014 was actually a very much a confrontational issue there. Uh, now let me take you on to the International Business Times. This article here is June 25th. Uh, it was dated, it was released at 7.46 uh, uh, p.m. on the 25th here. And um, this the the the, the uh, headline of this article is Russian naval vessels led by the uh, Moskva missile cruiser prepare for an assigned mission in the Atlantic. Now keep in mind these are uh, the ships that are headed into the Atlantic and possibly even the Gulf of Mexico are vessels that are that are, that are uh, armed with nuclear warheads. That is exactly right, armed with nuclear warheads. It says here, a group of Russian Navy warships from the country's Black Sea Fleet will soon begin a mission in the Atlantic Ocean, a military official announced Tuesday. The, the vessels will be led by the missile cruiser uh, Moskva, the lead ship of the project, 1164 uh, Atlanta class of guided missile cruisers in the Russian Navy. In addition to the Moskva, the group of Russian Navy vessels will also include the escort ship, uh, the uh, Pipe Livy, and salvage tug, the Shak, uh, Shakatayor, Captain um, uh, Chukhavek, I believe there are some tough names to say here. A spokesman for Russian Black Sea Fleet told TASS News Agency, adding that the three ships are currently uh, replenishing water and fuel reserves near Spain's uh, uh, Cuata. In the coming days, a detachment of ships under the flag of Deputy Black Sea Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Valery uh, 
Kulikov will proceed past the Strait of uh, Gibraltar and will begin to fulfill its objectives in the waters uh, of the Atlantic Ocean, the Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement on its own website. Uh, reported there. Uh, says in the article as well, Tuesday's announcement came nearly a month after Russian Defense Minister expressed concerns over a U.S.-led NATO missile defense drill in the Atlantic. The NATO exercise, uh, which is titled At Sea Demonstrations 2015, has been planned for this fall and will involve Norway, the U.K., Italy, Canada, and the Netherlands and France. The drills will be conducted in the northern eastern part of the Atlantic, and this can signal only that there are plans to practice intercepting Russian ballistic missiles. Such drills cannot, uh, excuse me, cannot but concern us, Anatoly uh, 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 Antonova, Russia's Deputy Minister of Defense, told TASS in May. Now, this is kind of, it's, it, it, to me, it's a very interesting article. Now, I'm going to share with you another article, and this is kind of, uh, kind of really caught me off guard here. It's called Politico Magazine. This article here says Putin's plot to get Texas to secede uh, from the Union. Now this is just, uh, this came out on the 22nd of June and uh, it's kind of ironic, I did not know about any of these articles here because I had reported two days ago that it looked like to me that Texas was planning to secede from the Union. Now many people no doubt have, have thought of this after seeing Texas demand their gold back from New York. And, uh, and then again, we have Jade Helm. Look at the exercises, what we reported two days ago, the exercises by Jade Helm, uh, special uh, uh, groups in the military throughout Texas, Arkansas, California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, um, those states there are actually the states that they're doing these drills in. Is it, could there be some truth that Texas, along with other states, are planning to secede from the Union. Now, granted, Obama is certainly not my favorite choice either as president, uh, but nonetheless, we do have an election coming up, and this could be easily changed around uh, democratically. But if there is any truth to what I'm about to read to you in this article here, there are some states that don't seem to be willing to even consider the diplomatic or the, 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 pro the democratic process at this point here. They may be planning on taking matters in their own hands. And who knows, because we see right now that Obama has certainly led the nation on a very dangerous course with war with Russia, uh, especially the United States pressing against uh, the, the, um, the Russian bear at this very moment in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, it is something that seems to be, quite frankly, getting out of control. Now, would that change with another president coming on board? Well, from what we can see with all the people that are running for president, even Jeb Bush, everybody seems bent on replacing Putin one way or the other. Uh, for that matter, they're bent on replacing Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel as well. Um, so uh, it, it, it's a very, very dangerous and volatile time. I also saw another article just today that states journalists, in fact, this was, uh, and it may be in this article here, I forget now, but it, there's a law that was passed by Obama that just has come out, made public, that journalists that actually speak against the administration of the White House are now considered an enemy and are, are, can be targeted uh, as, a, as a military enemy. So that puts anyone like myself in danger as well. Um, I'm not for the Obama administration at all, but then again, I am definitely not into dividing the nation, uh, the United States either. You know, I think the thing is, is it was a great nation at one time, but what I do believe is that the United States is gonna come under the hand and the judgment of Almighty God, seriously, for dividing the land of Israel. In fact, if you look at this from that perspective there, if we look at the Texas and these other states talking about seceding from the Union, it could be very much that God is bringing out his judgment by dividing this nation. We also see clearly that they're trying to use violence in the nation as well, trying to rise up the black people against the white people in this nation. And it's sad to see. 
And I pray that my black brothers and sisters that happen to catch this newscast, even if you're not a Christian, wake up and recognize that it's your own government that's trying to turn people against each other. I know people in the administration, the current administration, that had revealed this information to me two years ago that uh, the, 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 the intention was, was to have another Benghazi only in the United States instead of Egypt. They're wanting to get, that's why the man set himself on fire in, in, in Washington, D.C., trying to get the, 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 the racists to rise up and war against one another. Now we're seeing attack after attack against the black community, and it is uh, deplorable, to say the least, you know, that, that these attacks even happen. And even the issue that came up about the, uh, the rebel flag being removed, and you know, I can actually understand why the, uh, the, the, the communities are wanting to have it removed, because being Jewish, and thinking of what Hitler did, Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany, the Nazi flag is a sign of oppression to the Jewish people. And would I want to see the flag flying around wherever I was at? Absolutely not. So I can, I can side with my black brothers and sisters that feel the same way about the, 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 the flag of the South because it was a war of liberation from slavery, and so it's still for them, it is a sign of oppression, and yes, maybe it should be in the pages of history would be the better place. And I know some people with the pride of the South feel differently, and if it wasn't for the slavery issue, then I could understand that. But we must also take into consideration our brothers and sisters, just as we have the Jewish people, in understanding what the Jewish people went through, through the oppression of Nazi Germany, they feel the same way, and we must take that into very serious consideration. Now, let's get to this article real quick here. As I said, Politico magazine, this is uh, entitled Putin's Plot to Get Texas uh, to Secede uh, from the Union, that is. It says here, Nathan Smith, who styles himself the foreign minister for the Texas national movement, appeared last spring at a far-right confab in St. Petersburg, Russia. Very interesting, despite roaming around in his cowboy hat, Smith managed to keep a low-key presence at the conference, which was dominated by fascists and neo-Nazis rallying against Western uh, uh, decadence. But at least one Russian newspaper, the uh, Vazagliad, caught up with the American, noted that TNMs uh, is hardly a marginal group and quoted Smith liberally on the excellent prospects for a partial breakup of the United States. Smith declared that Texas national movement has 250,000 supporters, including all Texans currently serving in the U.S. Army, and they all identify themselves first and foremost as Texans, but are being forced to remain Americans. The United States, he added, is not a democracy but a dictatorship. The Kremlin's famed troll uh, farms took the interview and ran with it with dozens of bots, of bots instantly tweeting about a free Texas. Again, let me state, I'm not interested in seeing the United States to break apart myself, but could this be a sign of God bringing judgment on the United States for dividing Israel? And some might say, well, Israel's not divided. Israel is definitely divided. We've reported before here on Israeli News Live, we have the photographs of the checkpoints, especially the new one that is being constructed as I speak here, nearing completion now from Tel Aviv going into Jerusalem. You, Israelis who have always believed Jerusalem to be their capital, their home, their state, their city, is now having a checkpoint put in place where you're not going to be allowed to go in uh, to Jerusalem. They're going to internationalize it. As we have stated before on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, where we speak about the, 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 uh, uh, the biblical aspect of these things here, it is the Vatican who is behind all of this. And of course, what are they doing? They're wanting to fake a millennial reign. So I guess they're also going to bring, bring about a fake tribulation. 
Nonetheless, they're certainly going to bring about the wars necessary in order to move the people in the positions that they want them in, because Jewish people are not going to settle for Jerusalem being internationalized. But according to Micah's prophecy, in chapter 4, they will go and dwell into the, in the fields. Now, that's a paraphrase there. I wasn't expecting to say that, but they'll dwell in the fields. This is after Israel's already come into their homeland. You get down to around verse 8, 9, 10, and 11 there, and we find out that Israel goes into tra tra travail. And God asked them, where is your king? Is there no king in thee? You see, because why? Israel wanted a king back many thousands years ago when Samuel the prophet was their leader, and God gave them a king. He got Saul, they got David, they got Solomon. But the problem is it wasn't God's divine way of leading Israel. And they rejected God's way and took man the worldly way of doing it. Now we have Netanyahu, and Netanyahu is not able to deliver Israel from the hand of the enemy, the Romans. So it will take the Mashiach, the Messiah himself, to come. As it was 2,000 years ago, Israel wanted to be delivered from the hand of their enemy. But it didn't happen 2,000 years ago. Rome instead destroyed Israel, destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the city under the hand of Titus. But the prince that shall come, according to Daniel 9, 26, he shall come again, and he would be of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. So that prince that shall come, the Antichrist spirit, the Roman Catholic Church's pontiff of today is coming again, and he's coming as a prince, as a deliverer, a false deliverer to try to come in and deliver Israel. That's why the wars come up. This is why we're seeing wars in different nations of the world, so that he can make himself as if he's some kind of great leader that can stop wars. Shimon Perez recently said that, that only the Pope of Rome can stop an end of war. Well, they at least they make it look that way, that's for sure. And of course, all the leaders go to him. Pope Francis has all of them. He has Obama. He has uh, Putin come and visit him recently etc. over and over and over again. Let's get back to this article though. Stay on course here. I apologize for, the, for, for being sidetracked. It says here um, uh, also that for Russians this was a delicious payback since the breakup of the Soviet Union two decades ago. Many Russians have come to blame the United States for their plight. A, a seething resentment over U.S. Uh, culpability in the loss of the Russian national power is one of the reasons Vladimir Putin is so popular. It has only worsened since the United States has led an international effort to isolate and sanction Moscow over its annexation of Crimea and incursions into eastern Ukraine. Thus, over the past 15 months, there has been a sudden bizarro uptick of Russian interest in and around uh, the American Southwest, most notably Texas. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can be said right in this as well. And, and, and one thing that does come to mind, yes, Russia does have a bone to pick, as we say in the South, a bone to pick with the United States as well as the Vatican for that matter. Uh, because why? It was Pope John Paul II and then President Ronald Reagan who calls, they formed the Holy Alliance as they called it, uh, it was uh, ran in Time Magazine, caused the collapse of the Soviet Union. They were definitely working behind the scenes. So yes, no doubt Russia is also working behind the scenes to get these states to secede from the Union. And, uh, and perhaps this is why they're sending this naval fleet into the Atlantic and perhaps even the Gulf of Mexico to show uh, the, the Texans and the other states that yes, we'll have your back if you decide to do such. Now, quite frankly, I think that's pretty dumb way to do it, but who knows? I, I'm not into that. I don't live in Texas, and uh, um, you know, but we won't even go in that area there. But let's go continue on. Uh, it says here that, um, um, oh, thus over the past 15 months, there has been a sudden bizarro uptick of Russian interest in and around the American Southwest, most notably Texas, where secessionists Sentiment never seems entirely to die out. The TNM's uh, predecessor group, the Republic of Texas, disbanded after secession's militants took hostages in 1997. In a rehash of the Soviet Union's fate, numerous Russian voices have taken to the envisioning an American breakup. The pluberus unum in inverse uh, out, of, out of one uh, many. 
nor is Texas the lone region for which Russia has cast secessionist support since the Crimean seizure. Venice, Scotland, Catalonia, the Russian media has voiced fervent support for secession in all these Western allies. Of course, Moscow mantra since secession for thee, but not for me, means you'd be hard pressed to find any Russian official offering support for the Siberian Tatar or Chechnyan independence. Now you can go on and catch these articles on our uh, Facebook uh, page, Israeli News Live, and, and read more about this. But uh, it, it's just very interesting to see this, and, uh, and certainly so. Uh, Russia, no doubt, maybe is fueling this type of sentiment among Texans and other, other people in these regions here. Um, but nonetheless, as we have reported yesterday and even this morning, we are certainly seeing that we are on the edge of a war, a third world war, no less. Uh, Russia is preparing for a nuclear confronta confrontation with the United States. China, as I said this morning, uh, are preparing as well. They did a uh, televised series showing that they could take out all Americans with the nuclear arsenal they have, running that in their own state-run television uh, broadcast. Uh, Russia clearly letting the world know that if they cannot counterreact a ground war, they will use a nuclear war. Now, one thing it does seem certain that Russia uh, more than likely intends to use nuclear weapons regardless if the, if the, if the battle breaks out in Eastern uh, Europe and Russia, mainly to be able to throw attention elsewhere. Um, but it, this is certainly uh, turning into a situation that it seems to have no end in sight, no plausible way of diplomacy if diplomacy is not done very soon. Um, so we'll just have to watch and see what happens. Also uh, in Israel, Ga the Gazans, uh, the Hamas group there has uh, breached the air security in Israel with, uh, with their own makeshift, uh, makeshift drone there coming into uh, Israel, the IDF engineer course. Uh, forces retrieve the vehicle in order to inspect it and investigate its capabilities. The uh, Israeli Air Force, the IAF, emphasized that throughout the security incident, the drone was being closely monitored and posed no direct threat. Um, fighter jets were launched and rushed into the area out of the fear that the drone may have been armed and intended for to conduct an attack or else uh, was conducting surveillance and gathering information in preparation for an attack. However, the drone fell to the ground without a shot being fired. Hamas has in the past stated that it has drone capabilities and is working to develop them further. Roughly half a year ago, Hamas held a military parade in the streets of Gaza, which was accompanied by drones. Interesting as we see the, the world changing right before our eyes. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Good evening.